Today we are going to be Woo. unboxing, assembling, and riding one of the best electric scooters from 2021 that just got even better. It's called the Nami Birdie Max 2. But before we get started, let's just take a look at this box. Box within a box. You can see there's a little bit of damage. I know there are some problems with the first Nami. Yeah, there was shipping issues. It looks like they solved the issue by double boxing them. And so those industrial straps are an upgrade. And then we can see there is some damage. Damage to boxes, scooter boxes, e-bike boxes. Uh, it's nothing new. These things are so big and so heavy. So it looks like the damage is only to the external box. The inside of the box is doing well. We're excited to open this up and see how the scooter looks. Andrew, what can we expect from this? Yeah, it's a really powerful scooter. It's a 72 volt, 32 amp hour system with dual 1500 watt motors, which has a peak power of 8400 watts output. So I should be going 60 miles per hour on the scooter. Oh, that's awesome. They use straps on the inside too. And one thing I've always loved about Nami is they use sustainable packaging. It's no foam, it's all cardboard on the inside. In the internal box, you can already tell it is of a higher grade cardboard, but you can tell how thin this is compared to this guy. I'm, I'm impressed already. So really the only damage to the internal box that we're seeing is a little bit going on here and a little bit there. Oh, and over here. There's no parts sticking out. That's the most important thing. I feel like I'm uh, in Indiana Jones. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Raiders Arts. of the Lost Ark. They open it up and then all the ghosts. This is an amazing clamp that they have. I mean, this is high quality stuff. Because there is no foam packaging, it's all cardboard. Cardboard can be recycled. The foam, I don't think it can be. This is an amazing clamp system. Comes with a steering damper. And this is one of the upgrades to the newest model is it comes with a five amp charger. 84 volt output with five amps. These ones I can already tell are much better than most tools. These are the tools that you're more likely to find in a lot of the other scooters. What used to be nice and sharp is now rounded. And so they don't really work all that well. Oh, this is really nice instructions. They have a nice big cardboard piece. This is a beefy scooter, pretty awesome. This deck is huge, like very wide. It doesn't seem very long, but uh, this matte black. I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah, weld marks are very beefy and it kind of fits with this industrial look that it has. This is a huge scooter. I didn't realize how big the scooter was. I thought it was gonna be similar to like the Cobble Wolf King, but it's a much bigger deck. It measures in at 11 and a half inches for deck width, a little bit over 22 inches for the deck length. If you count the kick plate, you're looking at about 31 inches of length, almost nine inches of clearance. One of the tallest scooters I've ridden. It's about 43 inches. And the big upgrade they did on the Nami Bernie Max 2 was make 27 inch wide handlebars. Ooh, look at that display. 51%, which that's where it should be. Display. So this is a completely different menu than I'm used to, but I did see there was some really good P setting instructions in here. We're gonna put on the steering damper. We're also gonna plug it in so we get a little bit more juice before we take it out for its maiden journey. The steering damper really helps stabilize a scooter at high speeds. It prevents overcorrecting. So what will happen is when you're going fast, you might hit a pothole, you might try to overcorrect and that's what causes speed wobbles. The steering damper will keep the steering stiff and prevent overcorrecting. And then you may hear in the background the fan, and that is the fan of the charger. We have the P settings adjusted to our liking. What did you do to it? Pretty much maxed out every single setting. It was set about mid-range for everything, mid-delivery to the front, mid-delivery power to the rear motor, and um, mid-acceleration setting. So I just pumped them all up and excited to get on this thing. If you're gonna spend this much money for an electric scooter, you wanna make sure it comes in in good shape. Gen 1 came a little bit beat up, but this time, as you saw, double boxed, great packaging, and we couldn't really find any damage except for just a little rubbing here at the end of the fender. I can't even tell if that came from the packaging or if that's just how it was made from the factory. Let's do a walkthrough from top to bottom. This is really nice. I haven't seen it in direct sunlight. I have seen that's hard to read in direct sunlight, but in the garage, it looks perfect. The Logan four piston hydraulic brakes here. It's a 2000 lumen light and it's really high mounted. This is awesome how high they mounted this light and adjustable up and down. They changed the turn signals to wrap around the whole side of it. So before it used to only wrap down the side, but now it actually goes towards the rear. 
Yeah, so it has this Knight Rider effect. Then you have a horn. It's not as loud as the Cabo scooters. And the horn is located down here. The controller's over here. This is super simple. I couldn't believe how easy I was able to learn the P settings on this scooter. Really great instructions and also easy maneuverability through the scooter. You just double press on the M and you get into the P settings. These grips feel really nice. They have a nice texture to them. Uh, very grippy and they just feel really comfortable and they're not loose at all. That's solid on there. So this is very similar to the one you see on the Cobble Wolf King GT Pro. There is gonna be a slight dead zone, so just understand that's gonna be part of the deal. The carbon fiber stem, this thing's gorgeous. And this is a really interesting clamp system. When you open it up and you're trying to twist this around, it's not the easiest. I find it's easier just to unhook this whole thing and then be able to twist it around. And then it's like it's on a spring. Really different and unique design that we've never seen before. When you go to lift it up, pops right into place. Right. Yeah, you can see how the wiring gets in the way. It really feels sturdy, zero stem wobble. So it's not super convenient, that locking mechanism for the stem, but I mean, with a scooter this size and this speed, it's not something that you're gonna be folding and unfolding frequently because this just is not a super portable scooter. This is something that I'm just gonna keep up and ride to and from work with and go 60 miles per hour. They made the handlebars wider, fixed the turn signals, made it more waterproof, changed the brakes on it. I just couldn't figure out what they did with these charging ports, but they have been upgraded. Fenders, front and back, very nice street tires. The suspension back here and in the front, it's 165 millimeter adjustable hydraulic coil suspension. You can adjust the rebound to be slow or fast. Faster rebound is more for off-roading. Slower rebound is when you're going at high speeds and you want it really ultra stiff. I'm gonna probably be going high speeds and I want it on slowest rather than fastest. And then here's the brakes. Let's show you the brakes over here. These are the Logan four piston hydraulic brakes. Zoom and nut brakes only have one piston in the center. These have two pistons that are pushing it from each side. And the brake pad is gonna be a lot larger as well. And then the other thing I would say is the body matte gray kind of dullish dark gray. But then when we look up here at the handlebar, you can tell this is made in a different factory because it has a different finish. It's a little more glossy, a little more dark, um, but it doesn't really stand out as being different just because you have this beautiful carbon fiber stem that connects the two. This frame is completely welded. It's not like your traditional square boxy frame that you just see just stamped out of aluminum. This thing is hand welded and it's pretty sweet looking. It feels exactly like a chalkboard finish. If I were to get some colored chalk, I bet I'd be able to write on this really easily. The branding on this is done very tastefully. It needs zero branding to stand out. It used to be called the Viper. They've gone away from that name, but if you look under here, still hints of the Viper, but this is the Bernie 2 Max, and uh, let's get our gear on and take this out for a ride. Special shout out to the folks over at Fluid Free Rides. This is an amazing scooter that they've sent to us to test and review. Yeah, they're based out of Miami. They have two other locations, one in New York City and one in San Francisco. You can do a virtual consultation with them where they can help you choose the right scooter for you because they have so many different types of scooters. And the other cool thing about this company is that they have a really good warranty, a one year warranty on their scooters. And then after that one year period, if you bought your scooter from them, it's 50% off for parts and services. Initial impressions of the 2022 NAMI sequel, it rocks. The NAMI is fast and powerful, yet smooth and fun. You can tell the makers of the NAMI care and are listening to their customers as the main complaints from the first version have been addressed. The packaging has been improved and our scooter was delivered in excellent condition. But we'll need some time to test the NAMI, so be sure to subscribe to the channel for when that video comes up. And if you found this video helpful, then help us out and give the video a thumbs up. It's the best way to support our work. It's amazing. Powerful. Suspension is great. Stay tuned for the full review.